Celebrating and taking charge of ADHD is an innovative group coaching program incorporating mindfulness as an essential tool throughout. This podcast addresses a number of topics that we face on a day-to-day basis and celebrates the precious human life we have all been given. Welcome to Celebrating ADHD podcast. This is episode 16 and uh, today I'm joined with Paula and Craig Trufford. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us on. It's good to have you here. So uh, Paula and Craig are here to share a bit of uh, an insight into uh, their ADHD journey or ADD journey as a family and also to share um, the benefits um, and misconceptions around uh, CBD products notably uh, CBD oil so they're they're highly qualified uh, holistic well-being practitioners with over 70 years combined practical experience and um, yeah, they would just want to create this, the space where people can actually get present to how this can actually help reduce the symptoms. So, so tell us, Paula, let's start with you. How, what is the, uh, the journey that you guys have been on? Uh, well, I guess for myself, um, well, as a, as a child, very, very bubbly, energetic child, uh, and became a competitive swimmer, national champion, uh, moved on to swimming for England and uh, Great Britain in my teens. And when I uh, quit swimming very quickly, uh, ended up in uh, getting thrown out of home because there was obviously so much energy going through my body that wasn't being used uh that that was just going off I was a teenager in all directions a little bit like a Catherine wheel and I I think that didn't really think anything more about it until giving birth to the two children two boys that have got that have just uh particularly the youngest one having so much energy and uh I can remember when he was six or seven, the headmaster called us in to, uh, to talk to him. And we knew what was coming uh, because uh, he just couldn't sit still. And he, he, he literally, I remember when he was about two, or well, if I go back to the youngest, he was walking at six months. He was running and jumping at nine months and at a six, uh, 12 months, he was doing bounce, bounce, bottom stand up on the trampoline and was climbing, um, climbing frames. And I was, for two years, I had to just stand at the bottom of all these trees and climbing frames until I thought, right, I can't do this anymore. It's not fallen. Um, I can't carry on. But in Marks and Spencers, he would get out of his push chair and run around Marks and Spencers and go up the escalators at about one and a half. So, so I remember getting just really glared at by people because I'd lost my child and he pelted and he was tiny and it would just look like I, uh, I was being an irresponsible parent but he just yeah was so fast I had a runner on my hands I used to put him in bright orange <laughs> if we ever went to a fair or something I'd I'd go to a shop and buy a helium balloon and get it tied on him so that um and really long strings so that if I lost him which was very regular I'd just be able to look for the balloon and put bells on him and just say have you seen the boy with blonde curly hair with a helium balloon uh, dressed in bright orange anywhere yeah (laughs) Um, right at at about two years old I thought right I'm going to have to think of him as my personal trainer because I don't know how well how else to put this into context Mm. in my brain that if I think that I've got to do two laps around Mark Spencer's, then he's keeping me fit rather than getting really frustrated about the two laps around Mark Spencer's. And the game it then became because he'd hide somewhere and I'd have to find him in the middle of the men's trousers or whatever. (laughs) And um, so when the headmaster called us in, we we both knew what was coming. Yes, uh, we sat Mr. and Mrs. Trafford, uh, 
uh, we'd like to talk to you about your son. Um, yeah, and we just said, yeah, we, we're absolutely sure he's got ADHD. Uh, we thought that was what was coming and they went, oh, okay, right. So there was a big sigh of relief there, wasn't there? And um, well, said, the, well, the sigh of relief came after it had been diagnosed a few years but later. They were, but they knew they didn't have an uncomfortable conversation. Have you thought this, that, because we just said, okay, we knew where it was heading. Yeah. Um, um, and he is now 15. So the, the story with him more than the, the, the elder son, uh, it's just been, it's been so, so traumatic uh, in terms of just starting with the Marks and Spencers. That's just one of those things that I remember uh, being uh, condemned by other people for not being able to control my child properly. Uh, the amount of mom shaming that went on in the playground was absolutely horrific. It's one of the huge myths, isn't it? That ADHD is the result of bad parenting. Absolute um, bull. I had so many parents that just, you know, wouldn't invite him to the party because mm. he, was, he, he was so full of life that he would get all the other children full of life. And um, uh, yeah, it was really badly mom shamed to the point where I did become quite reclusive and I couldn't, we got called into school so often with his behaviour. Um, it, it was daily, um, we've, we've, we, we've been, uh, had really suffering businesses because of it, because we've had to be at home. He's off this week. Uh, he's been off, you know, quite a lot. So we have to, one of us has to make sure that we're available because mm. of that. So it really affects and impacts the business. Uh, we've had family members uh, fall out with us because of it. I mean, I could just, godparents. Um, so it, it's impacted massively onto, on the family. Thank you for sharing um, the insight into to family life. And um, you've mentioned the joys and you mentioned some of the challenges as well. So before we move on to specifically about how you manage those challenges? Well, um, I teach a mindfulness and meditation and relaxation practice called Kumye, which is over 2,500 years old. And since I have been studying that, and since I've been teaching that as well, which is about nine years, um, that for me, has been the game changer that and cbd so the cbd taking that uh brings me calm but the meditation practice gives me the skill to create the calm that the cbd gives me so if you know so you can take it orally and then you have to keep taking it but, but having a daily meditation practice for me i think is is a real game changer um yeah, absolutely. I think it really, really is. It's vital to to be able to understand how to calm yourself down. Uh, another really good thing is nature. Being out in nature, I think, is a great thing for people yeah. walking and just connecting to nature, gardening. Mm -hmm. that, that's absolutely that's absolutely great. Thank you for sharing it. I've just. It sounds like you've all applied a holistic approach and alternative approach to managing the symptoms of ADHD. Yeah. So as we know, there are many things out there and many beliefs that this, this works or that works, but what we're going to focus on today is the CBD oil. Um, so perhaps you could share with us what it actually is. Mm -hmm. oh, it's, it's cannabidiol. So um, it's an extract from the agricultural or industrial hemp plant. Um, people often make the mistake that it's from the cannabis plant. So it's from the cannabis genus, but it's not marijuana. So you, you can't get a high off it. You don't get a high off it. It's got hardly any, um, well, it's got trace elements of the, the psychoactive ingredient and um, you can never get a high on it. You'd have to take and drink litres and litres of it to do that. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's an element that helps to trigger the endocannabinoid system inside us. And the endocannabinoid system is pretty much the parasympathetic nervous system. So um, the functions of the parasympathetic nervous system are to calm, 
relax, bring a sense of rest and digest and repair. And without that, um, without that part of our immune system would be completely inflamed all the time and, and attacking whatever we thought was threatening us. So um, when we're attacking uh, a, a virus or bacteria that comes into the body, then the sympathetic nervous system comes into play and it attacks and beats it up, you know, so it's marshalling the armies. Um, but quite often what we need is inner peace. Um, like I say, the rest and digest. So what we found is that the endocannabinoid system is in the brain, it's in, it's in all the major organs in the body, in every, I think is it invertebrate animal on the planet. Yeah. So we all have an endocannabinoid system. I'm not sure that insects do. Insects do. They don't. No. So they don't have one. Um, I mean, that might even be saying something because a cockroach could survive a nuclear holocaust, couldn't it? <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so it's, it basically, um, cannabidiol, cannabidiol or CBD, as it's more commonly known, is simply that extract, though, those compounds that are found in the agricultural hemp. Mm. Okay, so what does it actually do? It calms and relaxes. And um, it, it depends what studies you read, because there have been many, many research studies done, even though you might be misinformed that there has been very little research done. There's actually been a lot of research done on the effects of the endocannabinoid system. Um, so the first thing that I think we notice is, is the calming and relaxing, isn't it? Um, it seems to just infuse the whole body with a sense of, calm, relax, safety, and inner peace. And obviously that those states are gonna have knock-on effects to just about every and any um, dis-ease or unease in, in the body and the mind. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it can be applied, it would appear, to just about everything and anything. Um, but it's always really important to mention this, you, in conjunction with your qualified medical practitioner and advice from, um, you know, so, and, and that's just sensible. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of, a lot of um, doctors, GPs are open to talking about it and to knowing how it's affecting you, mm -hmm. if you're taking it, if you decide to take it. Um, a caution uh, is that if you're taking blood thinners or if you're taking any kind of um, medicine that says, don't take grapefruit juice or grapefruit juice products. That's, that's a kind of, it's a, a flag to say, you definitely need to be talking to your doctor about this. Before taking CBD. Before yeah. taking it. Only because of the fact that it might push um, think other medications that you're taking to the end of the queue to be processed through the liver because it pushes its way to the front. So they might stay in the liver a little bit longer and can your liver process it when you're taking that that level of dosage so that's a precaution um mm. i've i've not seen any personally i've not seen any um anything that that's where, where people have had really bad reactions at all or side effects from cbd i'm sure there must be some somewhere to for some people um but as i say there's doing your own research is absolutely essential mm. um you know from whatever from whatever angle you want to do it on but uh it's, it's main it's main function is to calm isn't it mm, it's mm. an adaptogen and what an adaptogen is is if you're hyper it it sort of takes you into balance but also if your energy is really low or you're depressed it it brings you up so it, it it can take you down but also it can it can bring up the mood if you're depressed so it it finds that place in you where your brings you into balance yeah, I, th I think a lot, a lot of people who come to us, they have anxiety, um, depression, they use it for pain, insomnia, um, insomnia um, inflammation type pain, you know, sort of arthritis type pain, that kind of thing. And stress, really. And, and stress is, is a major one. Yeah. So they're what our, our customers use them for, those kind of things. Okay, that's great. Well, look, um, in terms of, um, see, with ADHD, a lot of uh, symptoms are affecting 
uh, our brains, we get brain fog. Um, mm. And that's how does um, is CBD oil good for the brain? Brain fog. Yeah, I mean it's just what. Uh, well, we use it during the day for work because it actually, it, it does this so that you've just got single focus and stops the mind chattering so much. Mm. So it's, um, it, it's really, really good for that, isn't it? And mm. our eldest son um, wouldn't revise before his GCSEs and uh, failed all his marks with unclassified. And then when he went into a, his exams, I said, why, do, why don't we try some CBD? I think he failed them all. Some, some the first set, quite a few no, the first quite set, all of them. All of them. <sighs> yeah. And um, when he went into his GCSEs, I said, let's try some uh, CBD. And we started off on low dose on the 5%. How was it? We came home, brilliant. So we started increasing the dosage and he was just saying, I'm doing really well with this. So we went up to the 10% and uh, one day he forgot to take it. I think it was a maths and um, he said it really, it, it was, it wasn't good today. My mind was all over the place. So I definitely, he was just saying it's working really well and ended up with seven GCSEs uh, and they weren't low grades either. They were between fives and sevens and yeah. considering it, he hadn't, applied himself and hadn't revised we it was a miracle it was an absolute miracle <laughs> that that he got those uh, and the only difference was the cbd yeah mm. that's, that's the only thing he did differently um and, and he didn't he, he enjoyed his gcses yeah and well there was nothing good. else there was no like traditional medication or anything oh like god that. no 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 i mean we no we we um we didn't feel, and it may be right for some people, I think, um, you know, there are a couple of sort of very famous actors who swear by medication. And, um, and I agree with them that it may be exactly right for them. We made the decision it wasn't right for, for hours, uh, even though there was some pressure to medicate, um, both from the education system, from the medical profession, and from other adults who, you know, many of who are ADHD experts, apparently. And, <laughs> and friends and family. And members, friends and family. Know, because we yeah. were struggling so much and it was yeah. affecting our livelihood so much, they said, you're yeah. just going to have to medicate. You can't carry on like this, but we... We, we refused and, and I, I think it was Paul, you first tried it out at a festival or something, didn't you? So yeah. we tried it out on ourselves and went, oh, wow. This, this has an effect. Wonder how it will work with our youngest. We tried it on our youngest and he calmed down. Mm. And, and that was amazing. You see, when we're talking about challenges, when he used to go to bed at night, it took him three, three and a half hours of constantly coming downstairs and was having to walk him back up, coming down, I can't get to sleep, back up, down, can't get to sleep. And that's after the bedtime routine. Um, nothing worked, nothing at all. Um, so we combined that with um, hops, wasn't it? It's a powdered hops mixture. Yeah. Um, and he was asleep within 15 minutes, which for us, and that was by the time he got to age 12. So I wish we'd discovered it before then. Yeah. But, but what we, we found, wow, this, this really works. And it makes a massive difference to us because we now get our evenings and we can give more attention to, to the others as well. And um, he is getting good quality sleep, which is massive when, when you have these issues, you need good quality sleep. So it calmed him during the daytime, but we also feel that it prepped his system for a decent night's sleep. So it, it helped to, to balance his cycles out as mm. well. I think one thing that's worth mentioning is that with uh, ADHD, is it's, it, quite often there's really high levels of anxiety yeah. and because he was getting shouted at so much at school and getting sent out of the classroom so much made to stand up in assembly uh, on and on and on on a daily basis um, getting sent home from school uh, the anxiety then starts to loop and then it gets bigger and bigger mm. and bigger and bigger and the teachers are anxious because of his behavior and then you know and, and they're and, trying to jump on the first thing the first thing and so there's this big spiral and what the CBD did was because it calmed, calmed him down and, and helped with the sleep, the, the, the loop 
were stopping. So mm. we were reversing the loop mm. now, and that started to, and, and the hab habitual behavior, and I used to think this is, he's now in learned habitual behavior. This is how he believes he is. This is who he believes he is. And I believe with ADHD and understanding myself, if I get stressed, it gets worse. And if I'm calm, I can maintain, it's the same with my dyslexia. If I'm calm, I'm, I don't really show dyslexic symptoms. If I'm stressed, they're really bad. So I know that the, the calm is, is really crucial to then start to reverse this loop that's going on. And that's the, uh, a really key thing that the CBD, it broke the habit of him thinking yeah. that he was in, he had ang really high levels of anxiety. Yeah. And yeah. he did have high levels of anxiety, I remember now. But he, it was understanding that actually there's a different way of being. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Because our surroundings and our environment affects us. And one of the key things is uh, when we ex experience the emotion of fear, um, it just shuts the prefrontal cortex down. And, and we can't think properly. We can't think clearly. Um, actually, I can quote from the recent Dune film, fear is a mind killer. <laughs> um, Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. True. But I guess what um, people may be concerned about is perhaps the long-term effects of using CBT, D oil. Are there any? Um, we don't. We don't, don't think so. Um, you know? I mean, you could say that of anything, couldn't you, really? Uh, what we found is that our, people that we know who use it, and we ourselves, every now and again, we just come off it because the, the systems seem to be working okay. So the endocannabinoid system is working all right, you know. When I, when I will myself to feel peaceful, I can feel peaceful. I don't need to take anything today. So at first, you might need to... To, to go through your own protocol, your own program. And then after, after a while, you just go, well, I don't need it now. So I'm not going to use it now. Um, so I haven't seen, and, I, and we haven't heard of anybody, and I haven't read any studies. Um, it doesn't mean there aren't any. I haven't read any that say that there are any long-term adverse effects. Mm. Personally, from my own perspective, as a holistic health practitioner, um if you're not overdoing stuff whatever the stuff is if you're not overdoing most stuff um and you're really becoming self-aware and self-monitoring um and you're you're talking to to your medical practitioner um whenever you feel the need then you know you're taking responsibility for your own health and well-being and therefore whatever you're taking um you know when to reduce it so and um, I forgot what I was going to say now, but I was just I was thinking about alcohol, and uh, I think that that you know long term effects of alcohol <laughs> compared to CBD or smoking, which are you know part of our culture, and overeating and we eating loads of wheat and sugar um, are far more harmful mm. than taking CBD. And that was that's what I was going to say. It's uh, it's like taking a cold pressed oil, like flaxseed oil. So it's got that benefit. Uh, and also our endocannabinoid system, uh, because hemp's been out of our lives for so long, <coughs> we've all got uh, depleted endocannabinoid systems um, because hemp used to grow prolifically um, all over the world, all over this country. And, um, and it was fed to cattle and the cattle would poo it out and it would go onto the soil and we'd eat the cattle and the poo would go into the soil. So the, our endocannabinoid systems were being boosted all the time. Our vegetables would have been grown. And so um, we had um, a really vibrant endocannabinoid system and that's been out of our culture since about 1937. Yeah, so yeah, so ne nearly a hundred years. So yeah. just by taking it as a, uh, as something to boost your endocannabinoid system, you could just take a really low dose regularly just to boost that up as a cold pressed oil. Mm. Uh, I think it's a, a really beneficial thing for most people just because of that uh, deficiency. Okay, and yeah. He was, he was um, I mean, they, they asked for him to, to take it um, frequently at school, yeah. at his schools. Um, 
it became known as his calming drops. Mm. Um, and I think as much as they saw the calm in him, it enabled teachers to feel their own sense of relief. Not only that, it enabled them to communicate to the young human being that was in front of them rather than the behaviour that was niggling them. Um, so that was a massive relief all round. So it, it was a, it was not just a benefit on the our child. It was a benefit on the the adults around him, and therefore uh, an extended benefit on the the kind of the school culture around him as well. Mm, interesting. Yeah. So yeah, maybe, maybe uh, something teachers and schools could look at mm. and investigate more for everyone um so what i'm hearing is that there's there's no withdrawal effects if you've been taking it for some time and then you come off it you haven't experienced anything adverse so some people who um i have i mean there's one guy in particular i'm thinking of at the moment and he has he's been through awful bouts of high anxiety um and so he, he's taking it at 10%. That's the um, strength that he's taking because um, he finds that that works well for him. And then there have been a couple of occasions where he's just come off it because he's finished the bottle sort of thing. So he's just stopped. Mm. And then after a week or two, he's got in touch and he's been in a kind of desperate place. So it's like he's had to boost himself back up again. Whereas if he just sort of kept it at a level, then maybe that would have been better for him. He wouldn't have got, dropped so far down. But now um, I think he's at the is le- is is in the kind of situation where he's reduced it and he's just keeping it going at a very low level. And he feels like he's more in control of those issues around anxiety. So you know that's um, y- y- there's no way that I could have sort of recommended he take it in that way. Um, he's had to find that out for himself. Um, and as, as for myself, if, if I stop taking it altogether, I don't, um, I don't notice any, any negative side effects at all. I don't know if you do. No, it's, a, it's the same as taking a painkiller. You know, if, you, if you've taken a painkiller for if you're in pain like an anodyne or something, you, it just sort of suddenly wears off and then you think, oh, if you had a pain, oh, that's hurting again. Mm. I need to take some more. And it's the same. It, it kind of is the same as that. You don't get addicted to taking anodin, or I don't think most people do. But, you know, it's that sort of thing. You think, oh, actually, I need to take a bit more of that. That's my experience. Of it. Yeah, yeah. OK, that's great. Other well, aspirin is also so, available. <laughs> I'm just using that <laughs> as an example. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I mean, some of the things that I've read up about it, um, they're saying that the common side effect um, of this this treatment is appetite change. Appetite What's change. your view on that? Not noticed it. No. Not noticed it at all. Um, I, I, that could come from, I mean, that sounds like an effect of marijuana to me. Yeah. Appetite change, you know, munchies, all that kind of thing. Um, it doesn't sound like anything that, I or anybody that I know or any of our customers have never mentioned an appetite change. Mm. So you, you don't get a sudden rush for the munchies. Uh, I think the, the, the only side effect that I've noticed is, uh, and I take a 16% um, to help me focus in a relaxed way, um, is that occasionally I'll, I've got a dry mouth. So um, if I have a dry mouth, I'll drink some water. Yeah, and one one thing I would say is that um, because we've we've tried loads, uh, loads of different companies, loads of different types, yeah. um, and uh, sometimes you know when something's really working, you think, "Oh, I'll have a big dollop today," mm. um, and that actually has has been counteractive. It's it's counterproductive. Uh, counterproductive. Yeah, yeah. 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 So actually less is more mm-hmm. so you know that thing of oh you know i just have a i have a you know a, a big squirt today yeah, seen, load up. a load up <laughs> yeah. as actually i found it's not worked or it's made me feel out of out of sorts so yeah. finding your right doses is, is a real key and a real art and some days you'll need more and some days you'll 
need less. Yeah. And sometimes, spot, isn't yeah, it? sometimes you won't need any. And and taking loads just because you think uh, you know that's going to make it better, it, it doesn't work like that at all. Mm. It's really, it's kind of, it gets you in tune with yourself. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, how many drops of CBD oil should someone take that's new to it? Well, we can't, we can't, we can't really um, say what somebody should take, but what we can say is that um, commonly what we've found um, and lots of uh, companies who, who um, use CBD or who sell CBD would, would suggest and recommend this is that um, you start low and you grow slow. So what we quite often recommend is two to four drops, two to four times a day under the tongue. See how you feel after two or three days. And if you feel okay, then maybe, you've, maybe you're in the sweet, sweet range. It's not a sweet spot. It's actually a sweet range. Um, if you feel that you don't actually need to be that relaxed, you want a bit more energy um, or, or whatever the reason, and you, you take it down a drop or two, then notice how you feel after a couple of days of that. If you feel that you want more of the effects that you're getting, depending on what you're testing it against, if you're testing it against pain and it's actually hitting the sweet range and it's getting rid of 60% of the pain, then maybe increase it a drop or two and maybe that'll, that'll increase. So a lot of the time, it's, it depends on your body. It depends on how big you are as well. It depends on how well, how bioavailable the whole thing is for you and how your system metabolizes it and processes it. What we do is we offer people on our website a progress log. So you, you click onto the progress log, you download it, and then you can write what you're taking it for. Write it down to remind yourself how much you've taken, how long for, and what the effects were. And so that's a, a process of biofeedback, which, which always helps. You know, Your own observation and your own self-awareness helps with everything. And certainly with taking CBD, um, for whatever you're taking it for. If it's insomnia, then, then just take it for insomnia. Just take it and, and test it against insomnia. And how does that work for you? And if, if you find it works, great. Move on to something else if you want to. You know, if you have anxiety, then test it against anxiety. But don't just get CBD. Oh, I'll see if this stuff works because it, it makes no sense. It makes no sense to your body. So testing it against something's really important. And that's how you'll start discovering your own sweet range. Yeah, that, that sounds a sensible way way to do that. So in terms of, can you ever have too much of it? Can you overdose on CBD? If you take too much, I say to people, if you take too much, you won't do the washing up <laughs> and you'll probably fall asleep. It's that whole thing, you just can't be bothered. Yeah. And you don't want to be like that, you know, not, not having that motivation, but that's, that's the side effect. The washing up will not get it done. <laughs> it's not a depressant, so it doesn't depress. It just it's just a. Oh, oh I can't it's not, that that important. Important. It's not that important. Yeah, I'll, yeah. Do, I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I right. guess you know because it is related to cannabis. It's that you know it's not like cannabis, but in that not caring about things in the, in in the, in the in the cannabis way. There's that sort of very. Oh, I can't be bothered. That kind of that would be if you've taken too much. Yeah, if you've taken too much, you don't attach a lot of importance to tasks. Got it. Okay. Um, well, as as you mentioned, the cannabis. Some some of the um, I guess some of our listeners are potentially um, you know in jobs that uh, require um, drug testing. Does it show up on a drug test? Certain drug tests, apparently it does show up. So if you're in any of the forces, um, if you're an athlete, then you've got to look at whether you're going to take it or not. Now, we, we prefer, um, as holistic practitioners, what's called full spectrum. So it's got everything in it, um, on trace elements, of everything so it has something like 0.001 percent thc so that's 
you know, that's a trace element. Um, but broad spectrum uh, is further kind of extracted and that has absolutely zero THC in it. So from my understanding, um, people who are athletes um, have been using it for quicker recovery, speed up, speed up recovery um, and to help them rest and repair um, quicker than they might do normally. Um, people in high stress public services, um, they've also been taking it to reduce stress. Now, our senses, I mean, you can speak for yourself, but um, we kind of agree that uh, we prefer full spectrum, but we don't have to do those tests. So it's, it's kind of easier for us to make that kind of decision. Yeah. Definitely, we, we prefer the full full spectrum. We think it, it, it when you're when you're getting the oil, we also do a paste, a CBD paste. So that's a raw CBD paste. So that's one um, extract less than the CBD oil. We prefer uh, just personally the CBD paste because it's in a, it's in a more natural state. So you get more plant matter in it. So and it's quite, but it's quite spicy, and quite often people don't like the taste of it because it's really quite strong. But yeah. we prefer that and feel that that that's the best one for us. But uh, then they've got the oil, and then the broad spectrum has had another process. So it's another process along. Uh, it, so it's been messed about with a bit more. So that for us as uh, natural holistic practitioners, we prefer the less messed about with less yeah. uh, uh, but also don't I don't feel it's as, as effective but uh, if you're in that place where you are getting drug tested it's better than not yeah so it's but uh, we don't sell broad spectrum just because we we feel that uh, we, we well we feel ours is more is more um more effective at the moment yeah it certainly and, is for us but well. it wouldn't show up in a uh, if you were pulled over on the road for instance uh, yeah breathalyzed or whatever it wouldn't show up in that it's not it's not a drug it doesn't affect those functions it's just high like. level testing where like uh, athletes where the test's much stronger yeah it would potentially show up yeah okay great thanks for the clarification on that so that leads on to um just getting present to understanding um the specifications you know if someone wanted to um purchase some of the cbd oil there's terminology around it so which we've shared already the percentage of it the perhaps um you know how much of this product's in it or the other product how what advice would you give for um someone looking at what kind of cbd oil to buy well, on our website, we've got a dosage calculator. We've got a link to a dosage calculator. Um, we've also got links to other um, CBD information websites um, and also um, scholarly articles and um, various videos that, that people have used to, to discuss the whole topic. Mm. Um, and really, if you're looking to buy it, just look at this is what this is what we do we look at the presentation you know is it presented like a bang wow zam this will cure everything because if it's if it's presented like that and it's got statements such as cure your cancer with this um stop this happening in life transform your whole life then we we'd say that's a red flag uh, you're not allowed to make those claims for example so look out for dodgy claims to begin with um also look for um quality so some people like to see lab tests um and you can get links to, to the lab test of the batch numbers that you're putting out other people like to know like to like traceability so trace it back where does it come from so our, ours is produced in in europe and and we are um we're with one of the oldest longest um, established cbd companies in the country um, who only work with organic farms um, and farmers at the moment and that's just our own sort of ethical um, our own ethos if mm -hmm. you like um, and what we noticed was that there are a lot of i think wide boys is the best way of looking at it in the industry so you do have to be 
you do have to do your research, you know. It's like, and some of these wide boys, we're not going to mention names of, of high street um, establishments, but they were given slaps on the wrist for selling products without any CBD in it. Um, and another, yeah, health food shop with poor quality. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and so when we first started on our journey, um, probably spent two or three hundred pounds on CBD from various different com companies trying lots of different products and that was the first day <laughs> uh, and that you know we got stung quite a bit yeah um, and that was a, and then we got this massage balm that we sell as well and we got stung on that so we only sell products that we've tested and that we believe in um, and because yeah there's a there, there, there is a lot it's very confusing yeah. Um, uh, yeah there's a lot of education though out there and it's like you know we've got links on our site that people can sort of click through to and look at other people's websites and look at get get some facts for themselves and it is important because it's part of the process of taking responsibility for your own well-being is to research into what you're taking why you're taking it and um any cautions mm. yeah and yeah. i do think that you know we we've been uh i've been in canada it's it, it, marijuana and cbd is going to be you know, it's legal there now and and in the states we do know do know what's coming <laughs> cbd lollipop cbd biscuits cbd hummus <laughs> cb there's going to be you know eventually the market will will it'll be everywhere but i would just say to to you know the cbd coffee which people can quite often get now in shops is you just better to buy a bottle of oil and stick it in your coffee um yourself it works out much cheaper and lollipop cbd lollipops i just can't think you know giving a kid a cbd lollipop is kind of not really work you know it's sugar and cbd, sugar it's, and CBD. it's just a bit of a uh yeah contradiction a, a contradiction it? a bit of a sales salesy gimmicky thing although gummy bears can be quite effective yeah right. Okay, well, let's. Um, so, what I'm hearing is, um, in terms of there are many players out there, and um, to look for quality, would they would have lab tests? So, would it be a lab grade CBT oil as a sign of quality? No, it's, it's not necessarily even a sign of quality because some of, some of the lab tests can be a bit dodgy as well. Um, it's it's really um looking at reputable sites looking at testimonials mm. looking at the quality of the information that you're being given are they making claims or are they giving a balanced representation um are they have they got a fantastic marketing sales push you know not that that's necessarily a bad thing um but in that in the in their in their presentation are they pushing it or are they saying, uh, look at these reports over here, look at this study over there? Do you know, do you know what I mean? It's like that there should be certain levels of information that come with um, selling of, of CBD products because mm. it's, it's quite often it's sold as a food supplement, like lots of mm. things are sold as food supplements. And we know that there are scams left, right and centre in the supplement industry. Yeah, that's um, exactly. Yeah, I was just watching something about the vitamins. Yeah. And about um the uh lack of regulation and, yeah. and testing that goes along yeah. with it so yeah. is that the same for this market is there it is. anybody that's managing it or regulating it right now we're, we're heavily heavily regulated um but the regulators haven't really known how to regulate uh, the cbd industry and you know uh, I, th I think a lot of that is to do with the stigma behind cannabis and that sort of thing. Um, Who's the regulator? Who's oh, it's uh, is it Defra? Yeah, I think Defra. Comes under farming. Yeah, actually, it, it may be the Home Office. Yeah, it just. I moved. think it's the Home it Office. The Home Office. Yeah. Uh, last year, March twenty twenty one, it moved to the Home Office, but the Home Office don't understand anything to do with it so they're not the actual body that should be regulating it yeah. and so it's it, it was great it was, area, in, it was in quite a momentum before 
the pandemic started, CBD was moving really quickly in this country and it's just fallen kind of flat. It's, it's kind of in a, in a bit of a void place at the moment mm. uh, in terms of progression was happening. It, it was really moving forward. We were really hopeful that, you know, things would move forward really quite quickly, but uh, it has been slowed down just yeah. because of the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so in terms of the, um, still a little bit confused as to, uh, maybe I've got some brain fog myself on the milligram. So you've got 750 milligram, then you've got 2,400 milligram. I mean, what, what does this actually mean? It's, it's yeah. yeah, that's that's a tough one as well, because how many milligrams do you have? It's, if you've got 20 milligrams of CBD in a 30 milliliter bottle, how much CBD is in there? Which is why we go for the percentage strengths. Yeah. So because we find that easier to understand, it's a mathematical nightmare knowing how strong or weak um, something is. So again, that's why we've got a dosage, a link to a dosage calculator on our website, so that people can look at this for themselves. Because, um, for example, I haven't got um, a brilliantly mathematical brain, so it's difficult to work. Uh, things out for me but I can you know I can better understand percentages than I can milliliters milligrams grams and liters and and that yeah. that way of looking at things okay um, Ten percent. That, Ten percent. what does that mean 10 percent well, what I was going to say is um so the the, the starting place that we have is 2.5 percent mm -hmm. and that is for children animals very thin frail people maybe very sick frail people and elderly people but it also could be for hypersensitive people that you know people that are really 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 very very sensitive mm. uh, so most people adults would start at five percent but if they were a, a really big or you know big in height big in weight person they might start on a higher dose because there's more to get into the body and um, what I would say is that I feel the whole thing's been really complicated. Um, and actually what we're being called for is to just listen to our bodies. Going back to that rule, know yourself, start off really low. The plant will talk to you. It will tell you actually a little bit more, a little bit less. And that's why, uh, you know, having big squirts is not the way either. You just got to go actually, um, I could do with some today um, or, you know, I just need a little bit or I've got an interview going on so I could do with a bit more. And, and I always say to people when they get it, you know, take, get it on a Friday, take it on a Friday, Friday evening when you're not working and then take it over the weekend and have a play with it um, over the weekend so that when you are, you're at work or you're at school, You've got, you're not going into fear around it. You're not going, oh, what, quite so many people, uh, they take it and, and, and if they've smoked uh, marijuana in the past and have had um, uh, psychosis from marijuana, they take it and then immediately go into this uh, uh, kind of place where they think something really weird's going to happen to them because they're remembering marijuana, but it's nothing like that. So that's why I say it's really good to just take it at home in when you're on your own, away from people and just have a play. And the number of people that have started up at 5%, you know, been so frightened, taken one drop. And then after they've got their confidence with it, said, oh, right, 10%, this is really working. I've totally got it now. It's just a matter of being, it's really not, we don't have to work out from my perspective anyway, the dosage, the this, that, and the other, it's you need to listen to your body. You mm. need to understand yourself. But it, for me, it's been overcomplicated. Yeah, no, that, that's, so that's an Thank entirely you. holistic take on it. You know, be responsible. Dad. Yeah, no, that's try it for yourself. Well, I, I understand your points. Like, where should I go when I'm making my first purchase? So that's why we've said start low and grow slow. So um, of the ones that deal in percentages, um, then five percent is quite often. Uh, a reasonable starting place for the ones that deal in in milligrams if you see things like five thousand milligrams maybe look at that as a five percent mm. if 
do you know what I mean? So it's like you can you can roughly work out the the strength of something, um, but it's it's only when you actually try it for yourself can you know how how strong it actually is for your body, how strong or or how is it not strong enough? The the only way is to test it. Because again, we're we're all different, and even with ADHD, the story will be different. Yeah, and it's the same with our sensitivities. And the sensitivities can be different on different days. So yeah. it's a spectrum, isn't it? I mean, it is. Yeah, we all experience different the symptoms in different ways. Um, wow. So so what I'm hearing is um, start low, yeah. and go slow. Start yeah. low and grow slow. Grow slow. There we yeah. go. So yeah. start low and grow slow. There we go. So if heard it. Perhaps um, if you're keen to try it out there, you're listening, and um, I'm definitely keen to give it a go. So where do we go to find out information? Come to us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come to us. Or is the, um, the British Hemp Alliance, they're, they, they've got lots of information. There, there are quite a few CBD companies who have plenty of information um, from different angles, depending on what elements of CBD they're selling. Um, we can signpost people from our website. And um, I mean, obviously, it's, it's easy to just put CBD. So let's say you've got um, insomnia, CBD for insomnia. You just put that into your search engine of choice. Um, and you, you'll have so much to aim at. What I quite often put is scholarly articles. So if I put that in there, then I'm more likely to get onto PubMed or something like that. But not everybody likes to do things that, that way. So um, either put in the, the condition that you're interested in taking CBD for or come to our website and um, play around with the blog and, and a few of the buttons on the on the navigation bar. That's to, great. Um, yeah, we'll, we, we'll do that. We'll put... Um a link in the, uh, the the podcast comments. And I think which guide has, has also done some kind of review on, on CBTD as well in this country. So that's yeah. good to have a look at. So yeah. what is the actual site? Come on, tell us. <laughs> BeKarmaCBD.com. So say that again very slowly. So B-E-C. Yep. B -E -C. A -L -M -E -R Bcarma, cbd.com. Bcarma. Because we are that's kind of our message to everyone. Bcarma. <laughs> Bcarma. Bcarma. Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's all take it. Let's see if uh, if Boris wants some. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and we're really open, open to questions as well. And and I'm one of the first people in the country to be qualified in using CBD in my treatments. Fantastic. Um, so we've got we've we, we've done a lot of research. We've used it on the kids and animals, and really interesting. Um, uh, we've had uh, people with Alzheimer's or the starts of it, and uh, they've used it and reversed it. Um, so it's we're not saying it reverses Alzheimer's or or anything it was like at the that. Beginning they stages. Their, yeah, their it's symptoms. It, the symptoms were reversed, but yeah. there's yeah, we've got we've got quite a lot of. Uh, experience with yeah. it and we're really happy to talk to people yeah. great yeah and uh, I mean thank you so much for your your time today and and sharing your own personal journeys as well as as a family and um, putting forward the, the the benefits around uh, this alternative treatment to reduce the symptoms so thank you very much hopefully we will see you again in the future Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Sue. Yeah. Thank you for downloading. You've been listening to the Celebrating ADHD podcast, empowering people to reach their full potential. Please follow us on the Celebrating ADHD Facebook page, Instagram, and Twitter, or join the members area at www.celebratingadhd.com. We are already good enough the way we are. 
celebrating ADHD Works Best combined as a holistic treatment program, so we advise you to consult your health specialist for medical advice. If you are not sure if you have ADHD, please get in touch as we can recommend a medical expert as the diagnosis is all part of the journey.